I love coming to Australia. As Jacques said, it's my fifth year here. Uh, I think you guys have a, like a great country. Also, a beautiful stereotype about you, that you guys are very laid back. Everyone tells me that, George, you're going to Australia. Ah, they're so laid back. Now there's about a hundred of you in here. Would you guys say you're laid back? Exactly, five of you. <laughs> the rest of you couldn't even be fucked. to say anything constructive whatsoever. <laughs> I found out exactly how relaxed you are when I came through, <laughs> I came through Perth Airport, right, uh, last year, and I went to my Airbnb, I unpacked my belongings, and I found a bag of weed that I brought in accidentally. And <laughs> I want to stress out, it was accidental, I'm not that stupid. I would never dream of bringing drugs into a country that has such a strict border security. You guys have created a reality TV show. And what did you call it? Border security. <laughs> I would love to be in that meeting where they were coming up with names for that show. Right, guys, we want zany, we want quirky. It's a show about border security. You're the best of the business. Go. Yeah, I have an idea. How about fucking border security? Yeah, good job, Demo. Let's go for a schooner. I love Border Security. I think it's the funniest show on TV. Nothing you'll see in this festival will be funnier than Border Security. Personally, I lose my shit laughing at every episode when halfway through, we all witness some random Chinese family. <laughs> Taking shit at the airport, right? At the very beginning of this, we all go, oh my God, this is racism. Like in pro, like I watch it right now, it's racism. Then they open the suitcase and instantly you go, mate, what the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> Have you not seen border security? <laughs> Your cousin was on it last week. It's so tricky, right? Because before you come to Australia, you have so many forms to fill in as an artist, like a visa form, 17 pages. And when they grant me the thing, and I think, okay, I'm done. And then I get on the plane, and you have this other little orange paper slip you hand every passenger on the plane with questions to answer, like what flight you came here with, and other questions, 17 questions more, right? Question number one, are you a war criminal? <laughs> like, wow, you left that one for the flight over? Are you a war criminal? Are you a war? Mate, I'm flying Jetstar. <laughs> question number two, have you had Ebola in the last six months? Okay, I get that one. Question number five, question number five is the following. Do you have on you right now $10,000 in cash? <laughs> Let me refer you to answer number one. <laughs> I'm flying Jetstar. <laughs> and also, I am Greek. Even if I did have 10 grand in cash on me right now, I would not declare it anyway. <laughs> Further down, another question always makes me laugh. It says this, have you in the last 30 days spent any time near a river? <laughs> Who the fuck knows? <laughs> maybe I have, maybe I haven't, right? How near do I have to be to the river? to qualify for this stupidity. <laughs> and also, who answers yes to the river question and fucks it up for themselves on the way here? I live in Newcastle-upon-Tyne. Do you know why it's called Upon-Tyne? There's a river running straight through the city called Tyne River. I live about one kilometer away from the river. Have I been near a river? Fucking no. <laughs> And the last question of the questionnaire, do you have any mud in your shoes? <laughs> and you're like, Australia, how did you go from war criminal to mud in your shoes in 14 questions? How are the Nazis and mud in your shoes in any way as offensive? I have a theory. I think what happened is whoever was coming up with a list of questions for the last one ran out of ideas <laughs> and he asked his mother, Because have you got any mud in your shoes is the most mum question 
in the history of the world, right? I don't know about your mom, but if you came back to my house with mud in your shoes, you are worse than fucking Hitler. <laughs> and we all do the same thing. You go, no, 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 no. Check your shoes. The fuck am I doing? <laughs> Let me in, I'll be good, I promise, right? <laughs> and for some reason, these Chinese people, they see the same questionnaire, and they go, no, no mud in my shoes. Just this fucking live chicken that brought with me from home. <laughs> What I'm trying to say is, I brought the weed in accidentally, right? <laughs> but looking back now, I remember there was a sniffer dog at the airport who came around, sniffed my belongings, and then walked away without barking. And now I'm thinking, wow, never mind the people, just how laid back are their fucking dogs? <laughs> how in the world did I get away with it? And then it occurred to me, did I get away with it or did the dog? Because if you think about it, there's currently a dog working at Perth Airport that has convinced people he can smell drugs. <laughs> and he gets away with it every day of his dog life. <laughs> I would love to be that dog, you know what I mean? Just walk into the office every day, look at the humans around you and go, <laughs> you fucking idiots. <laughs> I can smell nothing. Was that marijuana? Come right through, sir. Was that honey and banana? Woof, woof, cunt. <laughs> and if you got a friend of mine, say cunt, don't be. I didn't know this word before I came here. You fuckers taught me it. 